to those of you who have watched my last couple of videos about how I designed the factories for Shapes I.O. I have made some improvements on it so that it's even easier for me to play this game. First of all, I want to point out that I wanted some remote control panels so that in case I needed to build another factory that I can control them both from the same control panels. However, I noticed that each of the four stages required four rows of buttons, one for each quadrant of the shapes, and each quadrant required seven buttons, one for each primary or premix color, and four more, one for each shape on that particular quadrant. And so that would be 11 buttons per quadrant altogether, or 44 per stage. And I would have to string 44 of those blue and green wires. And that would have taken so much room. But then I realized I could reduce that number from 11 buttons per quadrant per stage down to only six. And that would mean that I only needed to use six buttons. Three for the colors and three for the shapes. And so here is how I designed it. I want to start off with these three shape buttons. Now, of course, you know that you need one of four shapes in each of the quadrants. But here's something interesting. The circle does not look at all like any of these other shapes. But if you look carefully, you'll notice that the pinwheel has one sloped side just like on a star, and one flat side, just like on a square. And so, I came up with a design using two inverters and three AND gates. That way, while the circle is on a circuit of its own, you push the square, and you get a square. You push the star, and you get a star. You push the square and the star, you get a pinwheel. See that? Now here's how I designed the circuit. Now, I've got these three AND gates and two inverters. Now when I click on the square, since the square button is on and the star button is off, turning this inverter on, it turns on this AND gate and you get your square. If I turn on the star button, then since the star button is on, but the square button is off, turning this second inverter on, you get your star. But when both buttons are pushed, 
because both buttons are on and these inverters are off you don't get a square you don't get a star but you do get a pinwheel and the circles on its own circuit and so rather than having to use four buttons in order to select a shape I only have to use three buttons which means I only have to string three wires now I want to show you how I designed the mixing station so that I can select my colors just by using these three buttons here you see as you already know if you had played this game before you need at least one row of these color mixers in order to be able to mix two primaries into a secondary and you need at least two in order to mix all three primaries into the white color and at the time I kept making four single stations one for each secondary and one double station one for the white which meant that I had to have four additional buttons in order to choose which of the other four colors besides the primaries but then I got to thinking what if I could design a programmable paint mixing station and so I figured out where and how to add these filters now these are access filters which allows access of each of these primary colors these are bypass filters that way if one primary color is not selected then the opposite will just bypass rather than just clogging up the whole system causing the whole thing to grind to a halt and then these are trash filters and what they're designed to do is to trash any remaining lingering paint that is still in the system so now if I select red then the red will access but since I didn't also select the green it bypasses to here and since I didn't select the blue it bypasses again and as this indicator shows this belt reader has picked up that I'm delivering red you see that as soon as I deselect red all the lingering red here gets trashed watch that again now I select green and the green is allowed to access but without red is then allowed to bypass to here and without blue it's allowed to bypass to here and so the sensor is indicating that it's 
picked up green. And now the green goes into the trash. Now watch what happens when I select blue. Now the access filter allows blue to come through, but without red or green, it is then allowed to bypass through this filter. And you see that blue is being delivered. Now, in order to select yellow, I pick the red and the green. And because I picked green, red doesn't bypass. And because I picked red, green doesn't bypass. Instead, they both go into the mixing station and out comes yellow. But since I didn't pick blue, the yellow is allowed to bypass. And so, we get yellow. Now I'm going to pick green and blue. Now since I didn't also select red, the green is allowed to bypass. But since I chose green, the blue doesn't bypass. And since I chose blue, the green doesn't bypass. Instead it goes into this mixing station and out comes cyan, as you see here. Now, I'm going to select magenta, so I click on red and blue. Now, since I didn't select green, the red bypasses. But since I selected blue, the red doesn't bypass. And since I selected red, the blue doesn't bypass. Instead, it goes into this mixing station here, and out comes magenta. Now watch what happens when I select all three of them, red, green, and blue. It'll take a while at first. There we go. Now when I select red, and green at the same time. The red button allows green to continue into the station. The green button allows red to continue into the station. And we get yellow. And both the red and the green button allow the blue to pass through to here. And the blue button allows the yellow to pass through to here, and now we get white, as you see here. And here is how I actually designed the circuit. This red button is connected to the red access filter and also to the green bypass filter and the green trash filters. This green button is connected to the green access filter and the red bypass filter and the red trash filters. Both buttons are connected to an OR gate, which in turn is connected to this red, green, or yellow 
access or trash filter and this blue bypass filter and these blue trash filters. This blue button is connected to the blue access filter, the red, green, or yellow bypass filter, and the red, green, or yellow trash filter. So there you have it. I want to point out one more thing. There have been times when I would select my color and shape for each quadrant and I'd be waiting and waiting and waiting some more for the finished shapes to come through and they never do and so I end up having to hunt and search in order to see what went wrong until finally I notice where my mistake is as one wrong shape or color of any one quadrant and it just gets thrown in the trash while all the rest are held back waiting to be assembled. And so I came up with this design of virtual factory which would control an indicator like this one. Now here I'm doing a simulation of each of eight belt readers where the buttons take the place of the digital output and some constant signal devices take the place of the analog output. Now I select my shapes and colors and suddenly this happens. And there we have it. Now, the way I designed this virtual factory is that first I included four virtual painters, and then these get followed by these four virtual cutters and these four virtual rotators, and then these additional four virtual cutters so that I only have one quadrant per each shape that I select. And then up to three virtual rotators in order to get each quadrant in the exact position as what the real factory is supposed to be assembling. And then I use these three virtual stackers in order to virtually assemble the shapes long before they really do get assembled. Now you'll notice that I also added some inverters and bypass transistors and you'll find out why any moment. Now meanwhile that signal that it sends goes all the way down to here and lets me know 
if I did it right. Now, all too often, we might have an unpainted quadrant or perhaps even an empty quadrant. But the problem is, if you leave one quadrant unpainted or empty, and you don't consider what the consequences are, then you're going to get a no signal output, meaning that it will remain blank. Here's the reason why. Virtual painters require two inputs because of one input remains blank, you get a blank output signal which travels through these cutters and all the way into these stackers which also need two inputs or they too will issue a no signal which will travel all the way up to here and then the whole entire output is a no signal and so you won't be able to see what colors and shapes you selected for each quadrant. So how do we resolve this problem? Well as far as the colors are concerned that's easy. Instead of just one transistor you use two transistors. Now first of all, you want a transistor connected to one of these readers because otherwise it'll just keep broadcasting the last shape or color that it received and you'll end up getting a false indication from your virtual factory and so pretending this is the analog output and this is the digital output you want to be able to allow the transistor to control when this thing is sending a signal and when it's not. But again, a transistor that is not sending any signal ends up sending a no signal or an empty signal, which then travels throughout the whole entire virtual factory and sends a no signal back down to here. And so, to alleviate this problem, you use an inverter and a second transistor, and you use a constant signal which sends out a gray signal. That way, if your quadrant remains unpainted and one of these readers doesn't pick anything up thereby turning off the digital output then by default you'll be able to make it send out a gray signal instead of a no signal. Now as for the shapes you're stuck. The problem is if you even try to virtually cut an assigned shape such that what you're virtually left with is an empty quadrant, that empty quadrant is treated as a no signal. 
And so you end up getting a no single output on your virtual painter. This is where these bypass transistors come in. For first of all, these inverters treat a no signal as a logic zero and an analog signal as a logic one. And if it receives a no signal, it outputs a logic one activating this bypass transistor, which then allows the other signal to bypass rather than trying to fight its way through this virtual stacker, which is not receiving the other signal. And I did it to all three of them. And I did it with the assumption that only one quadrant is full. So, like if this quadrant is full and the other ones are empty, then this inverter turns on this bypass transistor. So instead of trying to fight its way in, it bypasses. And then because this signal is empty, it turns on this inverter which turns on this transistor, allowing the signal to continue bypassing to here. And then, because this signal is empty, it allows this signal to bypass through this transistor. And so as a result, you're able to see which quadrant is being uh, manufactured. And so that's how I designed the virtual factory to let me know if I picked the right shapes and colors. I now want to show you a prototype of one of my four stages that I built so that I can make sure that it's going to be up and running before I duplicated it four times and created those four stages where I built the real factory. Now here as you can see I made four of these paint mixing stations and four of these shape selection stations. And as you can see, I designed a logic circuit with three AND gates and two inverters so that I can choose whether I'm going to make a square, a star, or a pinwheel on that particular quadrant by controlling just two buttons. The circle is on a circuit of its own. Now this is one of the sensors or belt readers that sends a signal as to which shape the quadrant is going to take on. And this is one of these color sensors to send to the virtual factory what color that uh, quadrant is going to be painted. 
And as you can see, I used two transistors, one of which will send out a gray signal if this is not picking up anything. Well, this one ends up sending out an empty signal as long as it remains empty. Now here is my virtual factory complete with virtual painters, virtual cutters, virtual rotators, virtual stackers, bypass transistors, and inverters. Now, the next part of this stage is designed to cut each quadrant and rotate them in order to be in the exact position for being restacked into the new shape. And as before, if it's not being painted, it gets bypassed, like I showed you in the previous factories on the other videos. And in order to double production, I actually doubled these devices. And down here, the same thing for the two lower ones. The lower left and the lower right quadrants. And they either get stacked into the bottom half, or one or the other bypasses. And then finally, the top and the bottom meet and they either get stacked or bypassed depending on which quadrants remain empty now for this prototype I designed a simulated goal which gets picked up here. This picks up information from the virtual factory as to if I did it right or not. And if I did, a comparator will examine these two signals and if they match, this light will turn green. Eventually, two more sensors, one on each half, of the prototype will send a signal indicating that the finished shapes have arrived and all four of them should match. So let's begin. I start with a green and then I click on square and star in order to get the pinwheel and then here I click on red and green in order to get yellow then I click on star only then here I click on blue and square to get the blue square and then finally I click on red and circle to get the red circle now you'll notice that not only by position, but by which quadrant is highlighted, that I'm actually able to see which set of buttons controls which quadrant that is 
being manufactured. That way, I won't get all mixed up. And you should do the same thing. Now, as you can see, this you know, all four of them are indicating the same thing. And here they are. Now, because it's a prototype, I'm just trashing them right after they get produced. That way, the whole factory will be able to keep going and when I no longer use this prototype, it'll be able to empty itself back out. This is the real thing. It's got four stages, and each of these four stages is designed to produce one of the four layers. Now, these two stages have additional stackers underneath which stack one stage on top of the other. And then these double layers get stacked on top of one another through this stacker. Now here are my four control panels. And as you can see, there are 12 wires on each side that goes up each side of the factory. Now the reason why I did that is because I wanted to minimize having to crisscross wires with those crisscross devices so that I can make more room to bring these control panels closer to where I want it. So I start right here and then I move to stage one I see that I need two opposite blue square quadrants and two opposite magenta square quadrants. So I click on blue square, red blue square, blue square, red blue square. And then I make sure that it's going to be in the green. And it takes a while to flush out all the remaining colors that are trapped behind that have not been trashed. Now I go to stage two. I see that I need two opposite magenta circle quadrants and two opposite cyan star quadrants. So I click red, blue, circle, green, blue, star, red, blue, circle, green, blue, star. And then I wait until this light starts to turn green. And there we go. Then I move up to stage three. Now here I need two opposite magenta pinwheel quadrants and two opposite blue circle quadrants. So I click red, blue, square, and star, 
blue circle. Red, blue, square, and star, blue, circle. And again, I wait for the light to turn green. And then I go to here, and I see that I need two opposite blue pinwheel quadrants and two opposite cyan circle quadrants. So green, blue, circle, blue, square, and star, green, blue, circle, blue, square, and star. And there we go. Now I move back to the factory output and you see these three red, yellow, and green lights. I put a traffic signal on both sides and that way I know how long I need to wait. Now these red lights indicate that the outermost stages have uh, spat out some layers. And the yellow lights indicate that the innermost stages are now receiving those layers. And then the green lights indicate that the double layers are being spat out to be combined into all four layers. Now these red lights will tell me if any of the shapes are not being spat out. And the reason why I put those there is so that in case I misselected one of the buttons, that I get a warning. These lights are connected to some comparators which compare what these sensors are indicating to uh, what is being assigned by the hub. And when all four of them go out, I know that everything is working smoothly. Now this sensor will send a signal to another comparator which compares that signal to this signal which is the same as this one and if they match this light turns green and as usual I wait until there are about 300 of these shapes in the containers. And off we go. Now I have the usual set of signals here so that I know how much longer I have to wait until these shapes finally reach the hub. And it'll take a while before the hub is able to read that the speed at which the shapes have entered it surpasses what the goal is.
I can see that the goal has been satisfied and that it's on to the next goal. And all these lights have turned red again because the goal changed. So now I can turn these back off and make ready for the next one. Now normally I would just go to the next one right away but here for this demonstration I'm just going to turn them off. 